Sisters and brothers, we do come, as Father mentioned, to the end of the Christmas season today. The end of this marvelous showing forth of God's love to us that began on Christmas Day with a babe, someone so small, so powerless. For those who cried out for God, we heard them in the first reading, blind, unable to see, locked in prisons, trapped, unable to move, and in dungeons, in places of darkness, far removed from the light. While the scriptures look back centuries before Christ, we don't have to go far in our own lives to find those realities of blindness, of being imprisoned by our own desires, our own wants, our own jealousies, or being locked away in darkness, crying out for a God to bring us peace, to bring us healing, to bring us wholeness. The Epiphany event we celebrated last week when Jesus was shown forth to the world, Christ for the world, light. We were told on Christmas, the light has entered the darkness. It's come to be with us. Last week, the light is for all. No one's excluded from the light. And today, Jesus' solidarity with us in our suffering in his baptism. Jesus, who had no need of baptism, enters the water of baptism that we might know his healing power. Not a power that overwhelms, not a power that takes over, but a power so tender, a love so tender that a bruised reed it will not break and a smoldering wick it won't put out. Sisters and brothers, we can miss this reading if we don't understand that a bruised reed is already broken. It is already in trouble. It is already at risk. And here is a tender love who says, I will not let you be destroyed. A smoldering wick has already lost its flame. It's just smoke and spark left. And this is a God who's saying to us, through this Christ, I will not let you go out. There's so much in this reading, this story of Jesus' baptism for us, of light. But notice, on Christmas and Epiphany, we have light. And today we're told Jesus is going to baptize us not with light, but with fire. A fire that doesn't consume us, but a fire that ignites us with the love that Jesus himself has shared with us. A fire that unites us to one another, that forges us as ore becomes metal and is bonded through fire and we are bound to one another as Christ is bound to us. Michael Sanum, a writer for uh, the publication Give Us This Day, reflecting on this reading today, brought to mind an icon. I'd like you to be able to think of this image. Think of the image of Christ standing above the waters of baptism and below the waters of baptism are the gates of hell where Adam and Eve have been condemned and all those who have failed and sinned have been condemned. And yet Christ, because every sacrament reflects the resurrection, Christ in baptism is standing there with the gates of hell blown open with all the tools and chains and, and nails released so that those bound in hell can be free. 
And there Christ above those waters of baptism has in his hands grasping the hands of Adam and Eve to lead them out of hell to paradise. What a powerful image of baptism that can be for us. For that is what God has promised to us today. If we have come burdened, if we have come blind, if we have come imprisoned, if we are in a dungeon, that Christ has promised us through baptism that he will grasp us by the hand and raise us up though we be broken reeds, bruised reeds, and tender smoldering wicks, that he will raise us with his love to be what? To be fire, to be fire. Bruce, your baptism so many years ago, so many years ago, I'm not pointing out your age, by the way, Bruce. But Bruce, your baptism, Jesus lifted you up and raised you to be fire. He raised you to be in solidarity with all those who suffer to be that spark of tender love for every bruised reed and smoldering wick. And that call is furthered today as you come to join us in this profession of faith. As you're confirmed that fire of the Holy Spirit, that it may fill you and transform you and transfigure you. Because today, Bruce, here is what you are called to. But not Bruce. All of us who have experienced the waters of baptism. St. Gregory Nancy Anson, doctor of the church, father of the church, wrote these words for us. You are to be radiant lights as you stand beside Christ, the great life bathed in glory, the glory of him who is the light of heaven. So sisters and brothers, as we reflect today on the baptism of Christ in the end of this Christmas season, let us hear God's call that the lights of Christmas don't go out. They are irons that we made indeed, that we might indeed catch fire and become flame. Please like, subscribe, or comment below.